welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of heretics in love. Love reacting to some Warhammer 40K. I feel like I need a t-shirt that says like number one heretic. <laughs> And so we're doing uh, If the Emperor Had a Text to Speech Device, episodes seven and eight. If you want all of our Warhammer 40K reactions, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you, as well as a link to our Patreon. You can get early ad free access to reactions like this. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's hear what the Emperor has to say. I mean, ever since I got this text to speech device, I have not seen anyone but my Centurion, some tech priests, that awful fucking Dread Knight thing, and you. <laughs> Where are the rest of the custodies? Did they all die off or something? Are you the only one left? After we witnessed you at the brink of death, your body being sat upon the golden throne, all custodies went into a collective depression. We all decided to stop fighting outside the planet's borders. We have never left this palace since, always guarding your sacred vessel. What a bunch of pussies you are. <laughs> I can manage myself, you know. I'm not a regular ass fucking corpse. It's true. No, of course not, my lord. <laughs> Also, that still doesn't answer my question. Where are the rest of the custodies? The rest are currently guarding the palace, my lord. Well, in that case, tell them to go out and be useful instead. <laughs> I can then give them the best warrior in the Imperium for nothing. Yeah, about that, my lord. Most of us custodies have not only sworn an oath to never leave terror and your presence after the Horus heresy, but have also redefined the use of our war gear and armor to show that we are more than a It's quite hard to explain, but, um... Awkward silence. <laughs> Bring in some of the custodies here. Some of my companions, to be exact. Do it now. Uh, are you sure? Do. It. it. Now. Very well, just a moment, my lord. Well, here they are, my lord. Some of your other companions. Holy shit. Roller skates, is this? Terra on roller skates? Glorious overlord, the Emperor of Mankind. To be in your presence once more. It has truly been too long, my lord. My oiled abs. My oiled abs. <laughs> your voice. So this is how you mourn the death of me, huh? I just want you to know, my lord, this was not my view. <laughs> oh, we wow. don't see you much around anymore, brother. What was your name again? My name is... Didn't we used to call him Little Kitten before he was elected as the Emperor's own personal caretaker? Oh, my. I remember that little bottom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. Little Kitten, the elected one. <laughs> oh, God. Throwing his way so far into our ranks. You weren't ever useful for anything more but sweet talk, were you? <laughs> Speaking of which... My glorious overlord. This shit is so surreal. <laughs> Kitten over here has been your caretaker for such a long time. Would you perhaps be interested if any one of your other companions were to take over as the caretaker? I do remember quite fondly that I was your favorite warrior during the Battle of Gyros Thravian. The only thing I remember about that battle is that Robodor, Mordari, and fucking Horus were being dominated by stupid orcs. <laughs> when their defeat was imminent, I came along and saved the fucking day with my massive army of golden people, killing 100,000 orcs at the cost of three of our own. Damn! I was in that battle as well, my lord. If you remember when you climbed on the enemy wall versus Gargan, Hilarious. Truly, I am deserving of the position as your caretaker. I'm still not even sure why you guys are half naked. <laughs> I also want to change my personal complaint manager. I mean, what do you even do? Stand around and fap in the palace? <laughs> Only on Thursdays. Holy body, my lord. Not one scratch shall reach you while we stand guard. No scratches, huh? Try a fucking warp induced nuke right to the face <laughs> and see what happens. Uh, um. You are the strongest fucking warriors that exist in the Imperium. What in the fuck are you guys doing undressed inside the Imperial Palace literally doing fuck all? When was the last time any one of you killed anything? Uh, I killed a fly the other day. <laughs> you have the best arsenal ever put together at your 
disposal and you do not use it. You should be fucking ashamed, you shit nuggets. <laughs> shit nuggets. I want you three fuckers to get dressed. Get at least a hundred other custodes ready. Start up your ships and go do something for the Imperium. The rest of my 300 companions can stay within the Imperial Palace for now. Very well, my lord. It shall be done. We will be back with spoils of our victory shortly, my glorious overlord. What a commanding presence. Oh God. <laughs> what I wouldn't give to play some blood games with him. <laughs> so, um, sh should I follow them? No, you are staying here. I still need someone to tell me stupid shit I can complain about. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> <Not a Seinfeld. laughs> anyway, tell me what tyrannids are. Well, you're not gonna like this. <laughs> hmm. So, it begins. I suppose it's time to go do something completely inexplicable. Again. He was like sing songy. Yeah. Really? Inquisition. <laughs> Inquisition giggles. I like that. Was the taint of chaos not discovered amongst his followers? We could have known if he was tainted or not before our final judgment was called for, but because of you, we lost that chance. Oh, but you could never be too careful about the ever present threat of chaos, Ecclesiarch. And that is why I have come here as the Inquisition's own representative. My nostrils said something fierce. Where's all your finger? Time to tell heads hit you, but What's today? What are you jabbering on about now? Why have you come here, Kanamazov? I and almost every other Inquisitor in the galaxy have received a message from Terra telling us that the Inquisition and the Adeptus Ministorum are to be disbanded. Okay, right. Yes, I know about this message. No one here has sent it. Well, there is no doubt it. It definitely came from Holy Terror itself. A forgery of its seal cannot possibly be this precise. However, it's clear that the Emperor of Mankind himself wrote it. Is blasphemous. It is clearly written by a heretic hiding somewhere here on this very planet. Being such a deluded fool, you do have a point. <laughs> <laughs> Good. See that the hat yours is at least allowing enough blood to flow from your scalp for you to understand that this situation requires mending. So what is your purpose here exactly, Theodore? 
What do you intend to do? I remember the finger I had before I replaced it with an auto quill. Oh, I just made myself sad. Where did I put my toaster? What So, yeah, all in all, Tyran is from another galaxy and have come here for the sole purpose of eating everything that is organic in order to grow stronger and fitter. They are honestly pretty damn scary. I'm lucky to have been trained not to feel fear or anxiety over such things as the seemingly imminent doom. <laughs> you say there have been an entire three major wars against these creatures with loads of Imperial forces involved? Yes, indeed. The first, second, and third Tyrannic War. As I said, the most notable must have been the first Tyrannic War, when they supposedly first made their entrance into our galaxy. They completely stripped the planet Tyrant of all life, thereby being the name of Tyranids. And you said during this war they destroyed the Ultramarines, devoured their entire first company, and crippled the leader of the Ultramarines, Papa Smurf, when they first arrived. <laughs> Papa Smurf. How in the name of Lee Man Ross's overinflated ego did that happen? Well, yes. All ultramarines in the galaxy were needed to beat off the assault of a crowd, but the two main events that are most important would be the confrontation between Marnius Kalgar, Papa Smurf, Papa Smurf and the Swarm, and the event that ended the battle in decisive. Now that he has nicknames for people like us. Yeah. What the fuck is a Smurf anyway? <laughs> I can already tell this is going to be a roller coaster ride of disappointment. <laughs> tell me what happened. Well, my Papa Smurf from the Swarm Lord fought one another in an epic battle with two independent characters. The battle was fierce, but in the end, the Tyranid proved too strong for him, resulting in him being gravely wounded. I am in the night again from the Holy Grail. <laughs> Oh, say it, just with a scratch. We'll call it a drop, there we go. <laughs> just as good. So this guy could not even fight an overgrown fucking book Gargamel and ended up force feeding his bodyguards to it. Wow. Continue with the story. It makes my bones rattle with condensed and overpowering amusement and joy. Well, mm -hmm. long story short, after being fixed up a bit, Marnie and Papa Smurf went to command the Orbital Battle over McGrath, but was led into a trap of the Ring of Old Cersei. Things were looking very grim for them. Led into a trap by a bunch of space locusts. This is dumber than those oiled up fucking strippers I call companions. <laughs> I am sorry. I am just absolutely living at the moment. <laughs> Remind me again. Technology is pretty backwards at the moment, correct? Um it has declined somewhat in your absence, yes? And those Emperor-class battleships are pretty much irreplaceable at this point because of the sheer resources and manpower needed to make them, correct? More or less, yes. So this asshole Papa Smurf, instead of just calling back his fleet to a more advantageous position in, you know, fucking space, <laughs> let one of those warships be lost forever in the warp for some depraved minion of chaos to find a diddler around him. This is getting me harder than Terminator! Oh god. <laughs> I want you to change my orders. Tell the Alpha Marines to get back Magnus without the Geller fields turned on. Let's see how they enjoy being fucked by demons. <laughs> those poor assholes in the battleships. Oh my. Anyway, avoiding the subject of the Alpha Marines further, these Tyranids actually sound pretty fucking fascinating. How easy my job would be if everything yeah. was just part of me and my giant intelligence and everything we did was in perfect harmony. Actually, remind me about that idea when I get off of this fucking throne. I'll make sure to do that, my lord. The human hive mind would surely be something fantastic to be part of. You're just saying that because you're thoroughly trained to be my bodyguard and not ever think, nor feel, or have any other purpose in life. That's right, my lord! <laughs> <laughs> A little smiley emoji. So anyway, the 
these tyrannids come from the eastern fringe of the galaxy and large bug flesh ships and chomp the fuck out of everything they see. Yes? Yes. And every encounter recorded with them describes them as insect-like creatures with biological weaponry and that they are countless in number. Right? Yes, that is right, my lord. They come in endless streams, too numerous to count with beasts, both minuscule and massive, all killing in their own unique, painful ways. Has anyone ever considered fucking bug spray? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my lord. Bug spray? <laughs> what is that? Sorry, I forgot. They stopped manufacturing those after the dark age of technology. Well, my lord, if it's a biochemical weapon you're referring to, I can say that it is not of much use. Regenerative power is something that the species seem to have picked up on, and many of them also have extremely advanced immune systems, so not much will work. In addition, the race is very adaptable, and if we actually were to concoct a poison against them to use it, they'd most likely gain resistance to it soon after. That is quite a fucking pickle. <laughs> is there anything that works against them? <laughs> if it's not regular steel on bullets, there's actually a special mutagenic acid developed by the Death Watch that ruins targets organs from inside and out. Ooh, it is used in nice. four rounds, it works fairly well against anything that's made of a flesh, but since Tyranids does not even have any kind of real armor, it seems to work best against them. Then why have any of you fucking idiots had the idea of filling <laughs> a massive space-sized spray can <laughs> with a constant stream of oxygen, Promethium, and this Hellfire compound, and spray the fuck out of the Tyranids or Gamma <laughs> fleet while still in space? That's a great idea, my Emperor. You are truly the most intelligent being in the galaxy. Sigh. Sometimes Sorry. I wish I hadn't made you custodies to be mindless automatons without feelings or emotions. It gets lonely here sometimes. <laughs> oh my, Emperor, you're truly the most funny being in the galaxy as well. Fucking automaton. <laughs> Well, my lord, at least we aren't as bad as those Necrons. So we're talking about those sleepy solist and skeletons now. Do tell me what the fuck they have been up to. <laughs> you know of them? Oh, uh, well, at least they aren't as bad as the Tyranids. I, um, think... That was great. The introduction of the other custodians, the <laughs> stripper fuck boys, whatever, they're oiling up themselves. That was hilarious. It was amazing. And I, and I love the fact of, of introducing new characters into this sort of reality and version of Warhammer 40K, because every time they've done it, it, the characters have been very unique and distinct, not what we would expect, and hilarious. Yep. Um, still uh, having trouble like connecting with the part when they go away from the emperor and they go to the other uh, inquisitor and like his like little like you know the posse of like old guys they're like sitting around like you know the bench or whatever that Obsessively are talking about poop. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, just, yeah, it makes me think like you know I don't know. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not fully putting that puzzle piece into place in my brain right now. It's like I'm the emperor thing is happening and that's entertaining. And then we go over here and like, this is interesting, but the overlap in, in the worlds and the timelines and everything, I'm just not yeah, I mean, enough to know. So they got a letter from the emperor because the emperor wanted to, you know, dissolve all, all this, uh, you know, basically he didn't want religion. And so he's telling everyone to stop. And uh, I get all that, but yeah, I'm just not like, I mean, I think there's like a little bit more, I'm losing the humor more in that part just because I think, don't think we're not, because we're not as familiar with uh, Warhammer 40K. So I think that might be a little bit more inside jokey. Yep. Um, if any of you have a good video that might bring us up to speed, uh, so we can be a little bit more in the know for that particular section. Like I know we've covered a lot of Warhammer 40K, but mm -hmm. it's such an, an expansive and dense universe for us to to try to digest that the more the merrier when it comes to educating us. And if you happen to know a video that will bring us up to speed on this particular version of, or this particular verse in the Warhammer 40K, that would be super helpful. Yeah, for sure. If you want all of our Warhammer 40K reactions, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And thanks so much for checking out our reaction for If the Emperor Had a Text-to-Speech Device, episodes seven and eight, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.